This is the support and resistance webinar for FX Street for, uh, what day is it? Tuesday, June 10th, 2008, and it's good to have you here. This is Rob Booker, and you're listening to the support and resistance presentation. I'm excited to spend time with you today on support and resistance because as of late, we've really gotten into a groove with respect to how uh, I communicate the support and resistance material at FX Street. Some of you are probably familiar with the blog that I do at FX Street, which is at postcards.fxstreet.com. And here's the address. And at that address, I post images and videos of support and resistance trades that you can uh, follow along with. And they're real trades. They're the real thing. They're trades that I'm willing and do put my own money on. And uh, of course, the blog is totally free. So to continue the discussion, even after we're done here today, that's the place to do it. That's the place to have that discussion is at FX Street. And uh, the blogs we have at FX Street are absolutely amazing. Two other things I want to mention. Number one, uh, I want to mention the uh, upcoming International Traders Conference. Uh, at, that FX Street puts on in Barcelona, Spain. I attended that last year, and it was absolutely incredible. If you're looking for a chance to really um, have a good time with a lot of excellent traders, that's the place to go. It was one of the best events, conferences that I've ever been to as a trader, um, not just as an educator. And uh, I'm not going to be doing very many live presentations any longer, and uh, that's one of the places that I will be doing a presentation. And then last is... Um, on the list of things to talk about this morning really briefly is that uh, the FX game at fxstreet.com is awesome. There's this dueling trading game that they're sponsoring and it's absolutely fantastic. If you haven't checked it out, you can simply just go to the home page, fxstreet.com, and you'll be right there and you will see uh, the Forex game and it's absolutely fantastic. It's a total riot and uh, there's prizes and all kinds of things like that. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is jump right into support and resistance stuff. And um, like I said, I'm excited to spend some time with you today and look forward to sharing with you some charts, some things that I've been working on lately. If uh, there's ever a time that you can no longer hear what I'm saying or something goes out, the audio or the video or something, just uh, please let me know and uh, I'll be able to take a look at it. We'll get it up straight. Hotcom and I haven't always gotten along. We haven't always been the best of friends, but uh, I'm excited to spend time with you today and I want it to be as productive an experience as possible. All right, let me uh, get my timed window here. You should be looking at a chart of the Euro US dollar one hour. If Boyke or uh, Tom or Ray or, or Pip Ryder or anybody could tell me, are we, are we looking at that chart? Then I'll make sure that I'm not doing something I shouldn't be doing. OK, great. Hey, we're starting off on the right foot here, folks. What I want to show you here is um, <clears throat> what I want to show you is the two trend line system that we've been talking about. We call it the two trendy system or the dual trend line system. And what the two trendy system is, it's a methodology of I think something just disappeared. All right, it's a methodology of drawing two separate trend lines on a chart and then uh, actually trading a break of one trend line down to another. So let's look at the two trend lines that we have here on the chart. Number one trend line is the green trend line, and that is uh, drawn because there was a recent low here in the first black box at point number one. All right, let's see here if I can get this done right. There's point number one. There's point number two. And you can see that it made two lows. I drew a green trend line along those lows on the four-hour chart. Then I switched to the one-hour chart, and I used one of the lows that we used, uh, the number two low from the four-hour chart, and I used uh, a low from right here. And yesterday, I think I published this, I did publish this in the Postcards from the Right Edge blog. You can see a video about this. And what we wanted to do and did was sell on a close below that blue trend line and target the green trend line. And that's exactly what's going on right now is this currency pair broke and closed below the blue trend line at 56.53 and it is currently uh, 
over a hundred. Well, it's a zillion pips. Is that right? 56, 53? Yeah, 150 plus 30. So 180 pips lower than that right now and on the way down to the green trend line. And that's an example of what I call the, thanks to you guys, the Grand Canyon trade or the too trendy trade or whatever else. Let's now take a look at the bane of my existence. Let's take a look at, it'll just take us a moment. Oh, this isn't the bane of my existence. This is the British pound US dollar four hour chart. So give me a moment and I'll share this. First. You should now be looking at a British pound US dollar four hour chart. How did I know where the blue trend line? Well, George, we're definitely going to look over this a lot more today and I'll, that'll give you a better example. I'd encourage you to, to see how I drew the blue trend line. Go back to postcards.fxstreet.com and just watch yesterday's video. It only lasts about a minute and 45 seconds. And that'll show you how I drew that blue trend line. I don't want to uh, discount your question or ignore it. I just think that's the easiest place for you to get that information, uh, at least the quickest. Here's the pound dollar four hour chart. And it's trading in a really nice channel right now. Um, it's trading in a rising channel, which means we have a tendency or a precondition a uh, preconceived notion that it ought to be rising up. Now, it's not doing that right now. Right now, it's falling down, and it's uh, falling pretty hard. And what I'm interested in, folks, is a sell trade if this currency pair can close below the bottom of this channel. So if we get a candle that closes below 94.86, but particularly and specifically below the bottom of the channel, then we'll be looking at an opportunity to sell this currency pair. What will our stop loss be? Well, our stop loss will go right back inside the channel. That's number one on the list. What will our profit target be? Well, that's what I'm going to look at right now. I'm going to change these levels to red, and I'm going to show you some profit targets. We could be in, finally, for a... Um, we could finally be in for a positive dollar movement on some of these currencies. All right. What we're looking at here are red lines, which I call Winnipeg lines. And they're named after a friend of mine in Winnipeg, Canada. And these Winnipeg lines are simply FIB extensions of the, of the channel itself. This first Winnipeg line is a 100% extension of the channel. As you can see, the channel goes from 99.30 down to 94.87. That is approximately a 400 and 50 pip channel. That means that if the currency pair closes below the bottom of the channel, we have an opportunity to trade it to a 450 pip drop outside the bottom of that channel. And that's called a Winnipeg trade. Now we expect that this, um, this currency pair, when it drops outside the bottom of the channel and closes below the bottom of the channel, we expect, even if that candle is really long and it ends up Let's say it ends up closing down in this area or something down here. We expect that it will rise back up after it closes below the bottom there. It will rise back up and actually re-hit and retest the bottom of the channel that was broken in the first place. Hi, Jubilee. It's nice to have you here. And um, that's called a Winnipeg move where it's a throwback or a pullback to the bottom of the channel that was broken that commences this move back down. So you have a really nice entry play. Now, where does the stop loss go? If we're going to sell it down to this first Winnipeg line, or even the second Winnipeg line, where does the stop loss go? The stop loss goes above the 94.93 mark. It goes above inside the channel that was broken. So if a candle actually rises back up and closes inside the channel, that's it. That's the trade is over. Trade is totally over, totally done for. There's nothing more to it, and we're completely uh, going to shut it off. That means that we're looking for a very tight stop and a very, very big profit target. All right, I'm going to stop sharing the chart. Chart is gone, and another will come in a moment. Um, just so none of you think that I turned off the charts and the charts are all gone forever and you won't be able to see them. What questions do you have? Are there any questions that come up? from that, or are there any currency pairs you want to make sure we look at today, make sure you let me know uh, right away, and we'll make sure that today, within the time that we have together, that we take a look at whatever currency pair it is 
that you would like to see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get another chart ready here, and we're going to move right on to the next one. So you want to make sure we look at the Euro Yen. Well, let's look at the Euro Yen right away then. And pound switch. All right, I'll write those down so we make sure that we don't miss them. Okay, there we go. All right, this is the Euro Yen that we're going to look at next. It'll just take me a brief moment to get that up and going. And I demonstrate the channel method on the pound 30 minute. All right, just remind me of that later, and I'd be happy to do it. Okay. What you're looking at right now is the Euro Yen four hour chart. And let's get a couple trend lines drawn here. Let's start with a trend line on the bottom. This is going to be our longer term trend line. This is going to be the trend line that. Um, is going, to, is going to be the target. We're always going to stop with it. We're always going to start, excuse me, with this longer term trend line. This is the trend line that we're going to use as our profit target. It's going to be the goal that we have in mind. We'll go down to the 30 minute now. I'm in the 60 minute. And what we're going to do now is draw a second trend line that's steeper. This second steeper trend line is the trend line that is going to trigger the trade. Now we call this the Grand Canyon trade, or we call it the two trendy trade, because there's two trend lines that are involved. Now, people always say the trend is your friend, right? Well, there's a point at which the trend ends, and what do we do then? Are we still trading with the trend? Are we going to just cost average down like people did with the pound yen and blew up their accounts? No, we're not going to do that. We're actually going to be willing to trade against the recent trend and sell it. Now, the recent trend on the Euro Yen, the recent trend has been up. And the, the recent trend being up convinces people that, of course, we want to be buyers. We want to buy the currency pair. We don't want to sell it. Now, the blue trend line is what shows me the more recent steeper trend. A steeper trend is more likely to fail. It's easier for a steeper trend to fail. Remember, if a currency pair shoots up really quickly, it's like running uphill at top speed you're going to get tired much more quickly. Now the longer term trend line, this green trend line, that's not as steep, and that's going to be much easier for the currency pair to break. I mean, much harder for it to break because it's going to take it a lot longer to get down to it in the first place. Now what we do here is we wait for a, a, can, a candle to close below the blue trend line. If a candle can close below the blue trend line, that means we sell the Euro Yen and target the green trend line, that's at 162.57 right now. It's approximately 500 pips away from the current price. So as you can see, what we have is an opportunity possibly to sell the currency pair in a steep trend and trade it down to a longer term trend. Now why wouldn't we use these trend lines in order to buy with the trend? Well, that's certainly something you could experiment with on your own, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't be doing that. But what I am saying is that I'm much more likely and much more happy taking trades that are counter trend with these dual trend line type opportunities. So that's the Euro Yen. Are there any questions about what we just talked about there? If there are, I would be happy to answer any questions that you have. I want to make sure that we uh, cover those. I'm going to save this chart as a image. All right, does it look like there are any questions that come up immediately? And that's perfectly fine. Then we're going to move on to a currency pair that you requested. We'll move on to another one. All right, the next one that we're going to look at is, okay, is there a condition for the Arizona rules? Uh, the Arizona rules, uh, which is a, a system of trading that I do teach, has nothing to do with anything that we're talking about right now. The Arizona rules are uh, considerably more complex and outside the scope of support and resistance trading. Support and resistance trading is the original methodology of traders, the original price action trading, and uh, it's the basic, it's the basic rules. It's what I, it's what I started with um, after uh, 
when, it, when I had made things much too complex. That's what I started back up with. Okay, let's look at the, someone asked for the pound Swiss. So why don't we replicate this chart? Someone asks, Jorge, do you abandon this trade opportunity if it doesn't work the first time around? Absolutely not. I actually continue to trade even if it doesn't work the first time around. Mabel asks, Rob, for the Euro Yen chart, are you saying if price breaks the trend line, it is probable it will go down to the green line? Yes. Okay. Let me know, folks, if I switch this currency pair. If I switch this currency pair, can you still see the currency pair? Can you see this pound Swiss chart? Yes, okay. We can see the pound Swiss one hour. Excellent. Chart got smaller, and it should be regular size. Okay, it's cut off. All right, I'm going to stop this, and then I'm going to come back. There is your chart. You should be able to see that now. Okay, great. Here's the one hour chart, and we're going to see if we can pull up or do a double trend line system by moving over to the four hour briefly. Let's see if we can do that. Does the four hour help us out at all? Hmm, it does. All right, here we go. So we're going to move the pound Swiss down here. We will talk about the stop loss. I haven't forgotten your question. I'm going to draw first trend line right here. These are all, by the way, trades that I'd be willing to take. Extend it to the right. Move the trend line up. Okay, so that's our first trend line. This is the pound Swiss. Now I'm going to move down to the one hour chart. Tommy says, if price respects the blue line on the euro yen, would you look for a long trade? Only if I was a, only if I was a trend trader, but otherwise no. I would just be looking for a, uh, just be looking for a counter trend trade. Why not start daily? Mm, just not in the mood. Doesn't mean it doesn't work. Just not interested. Okay, here is a interesting phenomenon. We'll talk about a stop loss right here. This would be a perfect example of trying for stop loss. Do you notice how the currency pair closed and broke above, broke and closed above the blue trend line in this area here? All right. Where do we stop out? Now, it, it tried to get above the blue trend line and start towards the green trend line, which is hundreds of pips away, 400 pips away, and it didn't make it. Where do we put a stop loss? How do we know that our trade is over? How do we know that we no longer want our trade? Well, here's what I do. I pick a recent low, and here's the recent low. And I put the stop loss below that recent low. So if the currency pair falls below 2.0177, that would be the end of the trade for me. I give it some room to move around because not every currency pair, once it breaks above a moving a a trend line or a moving average, is going to stay there. I give it some room. Here's an interesting thing as well. You, we could have drawn the trend line down like this, right? There's so many places you could draw the trend line, but what I'm trying to do is draw the trend line in the most recent manner. So if, say, for instance, you haven't taken this trade at all yet and you haven't seen it at all. Let's say that today is the first time you're thinking about it. You could just draw the trend line here. And you could just wait now from the beginning. It wouldn't really matter. How did I pick this red line down here? I looked at these lows right here. Or you could look at these lows right here now. And I drew a line 10 to 30 points below that, that level. Those are recent lows, and those are ex excellent places to draw support and resistance levels. What about profit taking? PMXGS, PMXGS, asks this brilliant question. Well, let me pause for a moment, just catch my breath. I'll be right back in a moment, and uh, I'm going to talk about profit taking.
Okay, I'm going to reshare this stuff and talk about the prophet. Okay, here's the chart again on the 60-minute chart. All right. <clears throat> I won't buy at Mabel. I won't buy at the blue trend line. Remember, the rule is beyond the trend line, not at the trend line. The rule is beyond the trend line. So the trade would open on a close beyond the blue trend line, and we had that just like this. So it would be open already. And someone asked about profit target, profit taking, PMXGS, PMXGS. No, not really pending orders because you've got to wait for it to close beyond the level. How do I choose a profit target? Well, the profit target is the green trend line. So I'm simply watching and staying in touch with where that green trend line is and waiting for the price to hit that green trend line. This is some of the most exact type of trading that you can do because it's dynamic, meaning the green trend line will fall as time goes on because it's sloped downwards and your profit target is much more exact in my opinion. Okay, so we've done pound Swiss. Now we're going to move on and take a look at the US dollar, Canadian dollar, the bane of my existence. Here it is. We're going to start with the four hour chart. We might go to the daily chart, but we'll start with the four hour chart. Yeah, let's go to the daily chart. Okay, on the daily chart, we have a couple choices here. Number one choice is right here. This is a green trend line. It's going to be our lower trend line. We're looking for something longer term. And we draw this trend line because it made lows right here, and it made lows right here. <clears throat> They're showing what we do once we draw the trend lines. But how do we draw these lines? It seems to be really crucial. Yeah, Marcos, um, What's important for you to do is follow the postcards from the right edge blog. Um, there's tons of information. Yeah, I'll change. I'll get the chart ready again. There you go. So that should be clear. Your chart should be clear now. Um, Marcos, there's tons of free lessons on drawing those trend lines in postcards from the right edge. But let's go over it, Marcos. It's, it's very easy. And don't make it any more complex than it needs to be. Let's go through it step by step. Let's use this currency pair as an example, Marcos. And please, if, please ask questions as you have them. Don't just disappear now. There's a recent low here, and there's a recent low here. Yes, I use Wix for trend line. <clears throat> Do you notice that it made a low here and a low over here? Those lows, we pick those lows. I call those pivot lows because it's like a basketball player putting a shoe down and it can pivot or turn on that pivot. You can call it a compass low, where this is the pound, this is the US dollar, Canadian dollar. OK. Why draw the line below instead of above? Why, draw it wherever you want it to. Draw, draw it wherever you want it to. It doesn't matter. You can draw trend lines above and below. It doesn't matter. Yeah, either way is perfectly fine. So we have these two previous lows here, and we can draw a trend line. So boom, we draw that trend line. It's done. Let's uh, extend this trend line out to the right. Now Bob asks, why couldn't we draw them above? Well, sure, you could draw them above. You could draw a trend line across this high and this high if you wanted to. Absolutely, most especially. Now, people might ask sometimes, why don't we draw a trend line from here to here? Because these are lows. Well, I want to draw trend lines, folks, where we haven't seen a break yet, just like we have down here at the bottom. I want to draw trend lines where we, we haven't seen a break of the trend line yet. That's what I'm looking for is trade opportunities, and trade opportunities come where something hasn't been broken yet. So we've got our, we've got our daily trend line going here. If we back it up a bit on the daily chart, we could even draw it from further back. We could draw a trend line from down here all the way along that way. So a super mega green trend line along those lows on the daily chart. So we've got right now we've got two trend lines. Now I just want to work with one. I don't need a zillion thousand billion trend lines. You can draw them all day long, 
but I only need one. Let's, start, let's just stick with the most recent one. Let's just stick with the one we already drew. It's the more recent trend line. We've got this drawn on the daily US dollar Canadian dollar. There's the currency pair right there, US dollar Canadian dollar. This is the daily chart, so let's drop down to the four hour chart and let's get ourselves a steeper trend line. We'll make the original trend line a little bit thicker and green because it's our base trend line. It's our home base that the currency pair is going to try to get to. Let's draw our steeper trend line along these lows. And boom, we have a steep trend line and a less steep trend line. It looks very similar to the euro dollar that we looked at a few moments ago. Hopefully I can show this to you. It looks very similar to this, doesn't it? Can you see the euro dollar chart? Are you able to see this chart here with the trade already open? It looks very similar to that chart. Well, that's what's firing up or getting started on the US dollar, Canadian dollar. That's the setup here. If it closes below the blue trend line, it ought to make its way down to the green trend line. Now, how do we draw this blue trend line again? Well, it's just, it's really easy actually. You find a low here, you find, and then you find lows all the way up. You find a low down here, a low here, a low here, all these lows. Perfectly, perfectly reasonable. It's obvious that a trend line is simply going to be drawn underneath the movement of the current, the present movement of the currency pair. So there we are. We have our trend line. And a close below the blue trend line ought to make its way down below the green trend line. Let's move out to the weekly chart. And let's just take a look at this again. Denby asks, should we always ask for, wait for a retest of the trend line before going into the trade? No, not necessarily. Uh, Zen Forex, I love the name. It is not necessary that it hits three times. You want it to hit three times? If you want that to be your rule, let that be your rule. Definitely let that be your rule. It doesn't have to be a rule, though. Remember that. Don't ever make something a rule just because you read it in a book or you think that it has to be two, two points, two touches would be enough. You don't have to always go for three. A lot of people will tell you that it has to be or it must or whatever else. Remember that your system and your methodologies are your business. And that's somebody else's business. There's the, there's the setup again with a red trend line from the weekly chart coming before the green trend line. You could use that as well. Are there any questions about all that? For a moment, let me um, see if we can bring up my browser. I'll just take a moment. So just take a moment, so be patient with me. The trend is strong. Don't you think that price won't reach the line? Oh, it'll reach it. It can get there. No, it's not strong anymore if the trend line is broken, remember? If the trend line breaks, that's the signal that the trend is nearing an end. This is technical analysis of stock trends. It's probably the most important book written about support and resistance ever. For those of you who are unfamiliar with support and resistance, this is an excellent tool. What percentage of winners do you get with this method? Well, I get about 70% winners with this method. What you get is going to be up to you to test and find out. Marco says, if you're using a weekly chart to draw your bottom line, then I would assume that the move back to the line will happen along that same timeline weekly. Sure, that's certainly possible. Absolutely, yes. Okay, the camera is the, the, the whatchamacallit is off. There is no chart listed right now. There's no chart listed. So don't worry, it's coming. There will be a chart. All right. Here is the euro pound. And this is the four hour chart. We'll be looking for uh, double trend line setups here. All right, let's see if we can find one. Hmm. Might be a little bit difficult. 
Let's go here. Let's go out to the daily again. We've had some good suggestions to go out to the daily, so why don't we go ahead and do that? Wow, this currency pair, as you can see, has been in a very, very strong, powerful uptrend. You could draw a line like that. We could draw a line across these lows. That's going to be a long, long distance. That's a long way off. The euro could be ready for a really significant drop. The name of the book is, let me write it for you down here. Let me write it for you. Hold on. That's the name of the book. How many currencies can you trade with the system? As many as you feel comfortable with. There's, there's, there's no limit. Okay, let's go down to the four-hour chart. We've got our crazy blue long-term trend line. Now we're going to go to the four-hour. Wow, this is going to be weird. This is going to be really long-term, folks. Uh, we're going to go to the daily. We're going to go back to the daily and draw the second trend line. Here's the second trend line. This is bizarre. You can look at the weekly, then the daily, then the four hour. I like to look at the four hour and then the hour. I like to do that. That, that works really well for me. You can look at the one hour and then the 15 minutes too. Marcos has said, you've spoken in the past about taking trades on a given time frame and not overlaying complicating things by referencing other time frames. Clearly that's not an absolute, but do you try to work with charts that are somewhat closer to each other, like the five minute and the 15 minute, and the one hour and the four hour? Marcos, what a brilliant question. Yeah, one hour and four hour, five and 15, five and 30, uh, four hour and daily, those types of things. But this two trend line system, that's what I try to do. What a brilliant question. Pnix Jajis, you know, PT says, let me rephrase my question. Suppose the blue line is broken and you are 100 pips profitable. Do you close any part of your position at that point? No. No, I don't. No, you say it would be a shame to give those 100 pips back. Okay, let's give an example of what I might do with respect to that PMIX GIF. Let's just um, give you an example. Let's say the blue trend line here was broken. And it was the currency pair closes below the blue trend line. And it's starting to make its way down towards, towards the uh, green trend line, all right? So let's say it's making its way down towards the green trend line. What we want to think about is, do we want to go for the entire amount of profit, as Pimix just suggests, or do we want to do something else? Well, why not, Pimix just, why not take half your profit off the table at this red line here, at this previous low? How do I get that previous low? From drawing a line underneath this low right here. Take half our profits off at that point, let the rest ride down to 75.45 or the green trend line. That would be perfectly acceptable. There wouldn't be anything wrong with that at all. Um, I'm not going to say that it guarantees that you're going to be a better trader, but that is most definitely a plan of attack that you could have. Are there any other questions that come up? Where would you put your stop? Well, on this trade here, we're always going to put our stops above recent highs. So let's drop down to a four-hour chart, and let's look. How about a stop loss above this recent high right here? Stop loss at 80.32. Above that by 30 to 50 points. Because the currency pair can jump up and move above that level really quickly. It can just jump up. It doesn't have to, but it can. Any questions that come up from that? Okay, let's move on and look at another currency pair. I'm really enjoying all this support and resistance stuff we're looking at. How about everybody's favorite currency pair, the pound yen? Yes, Mabel, exactly. Once it breaks the, the blue line and closes below it, then we're, when, then we're going for it. All right, four-hour chart looks like it might provide something obvious for us. Uh, we got a level right here. 
we have a level right here. Now we're looking at mostly currency pairs that have been trending upwards. Uh, can work both ways, and we'll see examples of that in a moment. So we see these lows right here, and we're going to draw a trend line underneath those lows. It's going to contain all the movement going upwards, and there's our trend line. We're going to get rid of these boxes here because they get in the way. What we're looking at. All right, so that's the that's the four-hour chart. Let's move down to the 60-minute chart. Do I wait for a double break? I'm um, not sure what you mean by a double break, but no, I don't wait for a double break. You can wait for it to move back up and retest the trend line if you're concerned. Can we take a look at the pound Aussie? I don't have that chart. I'm sorry. Not on x -tick. I don't have that one. So we've got a trend line here. Okay, so we can wait for a break and a close below the blue trend line to go down to the green trend line. Sorry, Ramey. I apologize for that. Um, and we could drain that. But let's do a triple. Let's do a triple trendy trade. Let's again, this is the pound yen on our chart. Let's draw a line underneath this. And let's do a three times trendy trade. A break and a close below the red trend line can move, can take us all the way down to the blue trend line. And a close below that blue trend line can take us all the way down to the green trend line. Stop loss above the recent highs, above 210.82. Now, I really like this trade. I'd be more than happy to take it. Let's look at a, let's look at something we really haven't looked at yet so far. Let's replicate the chart. Make it bigger. And uh, it'll just take me a moment to get this ready so the chart might be cut off while I do this. Okay. All right, here's the US dollar Swiss franc on the one hour chart. I'm going to go down here to a lower time frame chart and see what we can find. Hmm. Let's see here. I'm trying to find something that might go upwards, but it's kind of it's kind of hard right now. I'm not seeing very much stuff here. Um, we could do this perhaps. Let's take a look at this. Do I still trade my three moving averages? Um, if you're talking about the 513.62, no, right now I'm personally not trading it. There are many people who are. Um, I do uh, almost exclusively support and resistance trading. Um, yeah, I don't like what I see here. So no, that's not working out for me right now. Uh, let's go back down to the 15-minute the chart here. See if we can get a trade out of this. Uh, let's draw a really steep trend line here. Hmm. Okay, here's a here's here's first trend line. Why is that that I don't trade the 513.62? I just get bored. About every 18 months or so, I create a new trading system and I trade it. Um, but largely because it's uh keeps me interested, keeps me motivated. Let's see if we can draw a steeper trend line along these lows. Yeah, we could do this. Here we go. This is on the dollar Swiss 15-minute chart. So everything's going to happen on the 15-minute chart here. A close below the blue trend line could lead to a move all the way down to the green trend line. Let's go to the Euro Swiss or the Euro dollar 15-minute chart. Let's see if we could get, I want to see if we can get something going up. Aha, here we go. Can we get something going up? Let's see now. Maybe we can. Hmm. No, it's so steep. Wow. That is, the movements today have been so exceptional. But it's very, it's, it's, let's look at another one. Let's, let's keep looking. Euro Swiss. Let's see what we can find here. What about using an indicator like DMI? Sure, if that's what you like to do. There's no reason why you couldn't do that. Okay, let me... Uh, 
a leading question. From all the strategies you have tried, which do you prefer? Well, Ray, why don't I take a moment in just a second here and tell you which one I prefer. Give me a moment to finish up this last chart, and then we'll take a moment talking about what I currently trade, if that helps you. I love support and resistance. I think support and resistance is uh, just absolutely incredible. I think it's long term. I think it's much harder for support and resistance to break. Okay. Here's a here's a base trend line. We're going to make it above. Now I wanted to see an example of a currency period moving up instead of moving down. Okay. There's number one. That's on the four hour Euro Swiss. Let me type this in here so you can remember where we're at. Euro Swiss. Now I'm going to move down to the 60-minute chart, and I'm going to draw a trend line across these highs. There we go. Now break and close above the blue trend line could take us all the way to the green trend line. Okay, Maud, I think I only have a few more minutes, correct? I'm almost out of time. Okay, that's true. Well, let me tell you what I'm working on then. Um, I want to answer your question, and um, I want to tell you what I'm working on. Uh, let me see if I can pull up a chart here, and I'll show you something. This will be like bonus coverage or whatever. All right. Um, just take me a moment to pull up TradeStation. All right. Uh, maybe if I have time, please, a re quick recap of the rules. Mabel, just please go to postcards.fxstreet.com. Marco says, I don't mean to be a nag, but back to my trend line drawing. You're basing these trades on a separation between the lines. But what the first line is based on seems so slim. What would these two early, fairly close together points be something to base a future prediction on? It doesn't seem to be quite enough. Marcos, the, the real point is, is that um, most people think that they've built a system upon which they can really base something and which is really safe. It's all tenuous. It's all tenuous. It's all random. All market activity is much more random than people would like to admit. And Marcos, it doesn't matter, um, actually. And in fact, what you'll find as you test, Marcos, and as you make a system your own, as you test hundreds and hundreds of trades, that what you thought looked tenuous or subjective seems more concrete now. And in the, in the search for certainty and predictability in the market, people are often greatly disappointed because what they thought would work or what they thought was going to be so certain and this set of rules that was going to be so stable ended up not working out as well as they thought it would, news trading or anything else. And what I like about support and resistance trading is that it's so flexible. Um, Marcos, it might seem that it's tenuous, um, but it's the original form of trading. It's the original form before, you know, before everything else that you can read about, there was support, support and resistance and price action. And I strongly encourage you, take a look at the postcards.fxstreet.com and buy yourself an inexpensive used copy of Edwards and McGee. Trend lines, if they seem tenuous to you or they seem a little bit um, slim or whatever, you have to remember this is the original methodology of trading. This is it. This is the original methodology. And when you look at charts from from Wall Street, and you look at the chief technical analysts on Wall Street, what are they using? They're using trend lines. So um, I don't mean to be, no, I don't trade the news. I don't, I don't mean to be um, dismissive of you, Marcus, but I don't think that you spend enough time learning about it to really understand exactly what I'm, I'm trying to say yet. And I'd love for you to take a moment and just read through some of that book. Yeah. Okay. No, Marcus, I want you to, I want you to feel like, you know, that you can comment and stuff. All right, I'm trying to make this work, but it doesn't seem that it doesn't seem that this chart's pulling up. So I was going to show you what I wor I'm working on now, but it doesn't seem that it's working at all. Yeah, it doesn't seem that I can show you this. Hold on, just a second, Marcos. I don't mean to be dismissive at all. I'm just trying to let's see here. Let me try one more time. Can, can any of you see my chart? Euro, US dollar, one minute, Euro dollar. Can you see this in TradeStation? No. Okay, it doesn't seem to be working. Okay. Well, I'll post something in Postcards from the Right Edge that gives you an overview of what I'm doing. Okay. Thanks, Marcos. I really appreciate that. Um, folks, that'll wrap it up. Um, next time I'll find a way to share with you what I've been working on now. Um, but I just wanted to tell you that I appreciate that you spent some time with us today, time with me today. It's a, it's a fabulous thing to talk to you about support and resistance. 
it's my original and probably um, one of the methodologies of trading that's nearest and dearest to my heart. Originally, when I started trading support and resistance, it was a pain in the butt and was extremely difficult. Um, what's the next webinar coming up, Maude? Um, would love to. Uh, would love to. Uh, we have recorded this session, so it will be available in the transcript section. Oh, Derek Fry's coming up. He's awesome. So stick around, everybody. Derek's a good guy, and uh, would certainly not want you to miss that either. Can't wait to post in postcards from the right edge. So um, remember, yeah, one of the only live seminars I'll be doing for the rest of the year is in Barcelona. That's one of the last ones I'll be doing uh, this year. I've been traveling too much, too far away from my family. So you know, hopefully you'd come to Barcelona. It's a wonderful city. The food is great. The people are wonderful. And FX Street put on one of the best conferences I've ever been to in my life. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. And we'll see you next month. And we'll see you as often as we can in Postcards from the Right Edge.